Remember his Caribbean blood down in your veins. Remember your sunshine now when you meet the rain. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Makisha. If it's your first time here, welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get all the alerts when I upload new videos. I'm doing this video with my sister Donna. As you guys can see from this title, this is a very hard topic. Um, my sister Donna is on here with me. Um, you guys know that we're, we live in different states. So this is like a podcast voiceover type of video hi guys so in case you guys are not familiar with the andrea barrett story i'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys a quick little synopsis on what happened um andrea barrett 23 years old she was a clerk at the arima magistrates court office in trinidad in case you guys aren't aware um after work she got into a taxi in arima on january 29th 2021 and she was kidnapped and she had not been seen since then. On February 4th, her body was found according to the media release and her body was already started to decompose. A lot of things have been unfolding. A lot of questions have come up since this situation happened. So we're just gonna give you guys our take on it and how we're feeling about it. Donna, how are you feeling about it? I feel like it's unfortunate you know, she now starting her life and this something like this, you know, for her family to go through, to see that this young woman just went to work and didn't make it home is heartbreaking. There were seven people arrested in this case. Um, two are now deceased, um, three released. And I believe the others are still in police custody. The deaths of the suspected kidnappers are really alarming to the both of us. The main suspect, according to like social media and the media, it's um Jay Balcon. Probably butch butchered his name. But so apparently he had over 70 charges from I believe 2007 to 2017, I believe. Over 70 charges. Um, he's been in front of a magistrate judge, I believe, 20 times. And a lot of the times, the police officers in the cases did not show up, which is like so alarming to me that where in the world can someone have 70 cases against them? Not all for rape, but rape was included, um, kidnapping and a host of different things. But where in the world can someone have 70 cases and still be walking around on bail? It's crazy. Donna, what's your thoughts on that? And I just think it just goes to show in Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm not bashing Trinidad and Tobago, it's like crime detection is very, very low. You know, like it's just so strange that they had these guys in custody and it's such a coincidence that they're deceased, you know, when we could have probably got to the bottom of this situation, like this situation is really, really strange. Two suspects in a murder case that could potentially involve judicial and police corruption have died in police detention under strange circumstances. And why does this type of thing keep happening over and over again? Some people might say, well, they did the crime, so you know, they got what they deserve, but we need to find out why this crime was committed. True. Because that's what, yeah, so you could learn from it and how to prevent something like this fa from happening in the future. We don't need to focus on the woman. We need to focus on why we have all these sick men walking around and able to cause more pain and more harm. Why? That's the issue. The issue is why? Why isn't the government doing anything? Why aren't the police officers? Why is the crime detection so poor? And not cutting across you, Keisha, a lot of times these people, you know, they have their family, right? And the family know, the family members know, you know what, this is a sick individual. We really should try to do something about this person. Being around kids, being around other um, women and things like that. Sometimes we know some families have these sick individuals in their family and nobody does anything about it. They act like these people are normal. It's true. I'm sure, I'm sure that people, you, people know, okay, 
Uncle Harry, he's a sick bastard. And you he touched probably the mother when she was a child. Like, you never know. These things don't happen overnight. Like, a lot of these people come from families where they've been molesting people and no one did anything about it. You know, they act like it never happened. And it, 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 it's just really, really ridiculous, you know? True. And then someone else was saying, like, oh, they're in, like, broken homes. I, for one, know someone that is a molester and grew up in the house with his mother and father. And exactly is allowed to just continue to go around causing trauma, okay? Mm -hmm. And no one does anything about it. We ourselves, we have an uncle on my mom's side that's a sick bastard. Sick bastard. Sick bastard. And, pe and people in our family act like he's a normal guy. And... Oh, it's just a coincidence that allegedly, that's what I'm going to say, that he had sex with two underage girls. And people have their kids around this person. They hang out with this person. He seems like a really cool guy, but he's a sick bastard, right? And it just goes to show, I mean, I personally will not have my child around someone like that. But there's other people that say, oh, that wouldn't happen to, to my child. It wouldn't happen. He wouldn't do that to my um, child, but he'll do it to other people and, and uh, um, kids and stuff like that. And it's okay because it's not your child. But this is the thing. If you let these behavior happen and you just sit there and do nothing about it, you are the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's stop inviting the molesters and the rapists to the family functions. Let's exclude them. If they're kids, get your kids help. Get them help. It is too much and it's happening too often. Ashanti Riley was not so so long ago. It wasn't that long ago. And who knows how many other women been missing between then and now. Between Ashanti and Andrea Barrett. Who knows how many women have been missing between that time frame. And I feel like to have 70 cases, it shows that women are coming forward. It shows that people are coming forward with some of these individuals. You know what I mean? It shows. But then the justice system is failing. Remand Yard is a joke. Okay? Which is a place, which is a, a jail for people awaiting hearings and, and for their case to be called. They could be in there for years. Even longer than the maximum for their sentence, whatever crime they committed. That's how backed up the system is. And not cutting across you, in Trinidad, rape and any sexual assault crime, you can get bail for. I think the only crime you can't get bail for is killing someone. So if someone allegedly raped someone and you have the money to bail yourself out, you can be bailed, which is crazy. It, true. And also, I feel like this situation, the more like time ha has gone on, we're starting to hear more, I will say, alleged stories that maybe Andrea what came across some things in the Arima magistrate office that was being done wrong. And Shed was trying to shed light on it. And maybe it was a hit on her. So clearly, we're not idiots. We know for somebody to have 70 cases and for 20 of them, supposedly to go in front of a magistrate and some of them get thrown out because the police didn't show up. It shows me that somebody's protecting this individual. Who's that lucky to have 20 times <laughs> the police don't show up for 20 different cases? And why is the magistrate throwing out cases based on that? Exactly. It's just a weird situation. I, and I was asking myself, like, does, is this person part of the elite? Because for someone to get in trouble this many times, I don't know if he ever served time in jail. I really don't know the backstory, but all I know is 70 times 70 times no this is ridiculous exactly somebody's definitely doing some protection i would say this women and men try to raise your sons especially with a sense of you know what you don't own the females you can't tell a woman what to wear how to be how to speak you can't control her. 
So thinking about solutions, I would say that the police commissioner needs to be held accountable for his officers. I believe that each and every officer that has not shown up for not just this, not just this man's cases, all the cases that have not shown up and caused cases to be thrown out need to be investigated. I don't know if money is passing. I don't know what. I don't even know if it's corruption. It could just be a simple, oops, I forgot I had a court case. But there need to be subpoenas. You need to be subpoenaing these officers. And when they don't show up, they need to be held in contempt, warrants, whatever needs to be done to make sure that they show up. These women, for these cases, need justice. And to know that this system is allowing people just to walk free and for cases to be thrown out because a police officer didn't show up, that's ridiculous. How does that victim feel that had the strength to come forward and file a report and see the case go so far, but because the police officer don't show up, it gets thrown out? I say that the prime minister in Trinidad and Tobago and the countries throughout the Caribbean need to really form committees, sit down and change a lot of these dated English laws. Okay, it shouldn't be that simple. And I will also call on the prime minister, whoever is in charge of magistrates to even if you want to hire some from other countries that have less crime to help clean up the system, the system needs to be cleaned up. Okay, and the people that's sadly the people that's truly affected by the system being so backlogged is the poor people are the poor people of Trinidad and Tobago. They're the ones suffering. Because guess what? Somebody with money could definitely go ahead and bail, okay? Bail out and be on the street like nothing, still running their businesses and still doing whatever they're doing. But the poor man is stuck in Roman Yard. So I would suggest, hopefully somebody with some type of power, here's this video, guys, share this video. There needs to be some form of committee formed to revamp the laws of Trinidad and Tobago, revamp the laws of the Caribbean. I'm sure England not using half of these old time laws that that's on the books. That's allowing stuff like this to happen like nothing. The sex offender registry in Trinidad and Tobago is a freaking joke. Okay. Exactly. I don't know if it's a new system, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt. But you can't tell me there's so much pedophiles because a lot of people say they have, they say things like, you know what? After 12 is lunch. And they think that they can do whatever it, they want to these young girls. Oh, I'm going to buy her this and I'm going to buy her that. And, you know, these young girls, they're, they're not, they're, oh my God, okay. sorry. Saying like young girls, this is my advice to you, right? Just because sometimes you might be in a particular circumstance where your family can't afford certain things for you, don't let these men manipulate you. There's always a way to make it. Trust me. Trust me. Do not think that you're 15, 16, and a 25-year-old man is interested or a 35-year-old man is interested and think that that is cool. Or the maxi drivers. Or a taxi driver, anything like that. It's not cool, trust me. He's, he's having these conversations with many different women, right? And you're a victim. Even though you think like you're running game on him, you, you are a victim. So with that said, I really was not going to do this video. Donna knows. I was not. Um, a few of you were in my DM asking me my take on it. So I decided to just go ahead and do it and have Donna as support. Um, this is just our take on the situation. I'm pretty sure a lot is going to be unfold. But I hope the, peop- the relevant persons in authority take my advice investigations need to happen from the top down if they like how they wanted to hire bring in outside people to investigate dss they need to bring outside people in to investigate this blatant corruption that that occurred or is still occurring with other individuals in trinidad and tobago the prime minister said that that was a national security problem this is a national security problem women lives matter girls lives matter My heart goes out to Andrea's family. My heart goes out to all the missing women and men out there in Trinidad and Tobago right now. And my heart goes out to your families as well. And hopefully justice 
can come out of this situation right here with some outside help. So Donna, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I truly appreciate it. No problem. It's a pleasure. So guys, until the next time, stay safe. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about this entire situation, what tips you have for the Trinidad and Tobago government to clean up this system, clean up this mess. And until next time, see you guys in the next one. Sorry for what I have put